Uprising! So good to be back with you guys for the second week in our new series, The Naked Truth. Now, before we get going today, I wanna go through our guidelines really quick once again, just so you guys have a friendly reminder of what's going on. Guideline number one, let's be mature and respectful, right? Remember that when other people are talking, we gotta respect what they're saying. Let's try to hold in any sarcastic comments or giggles. Number two, this is a normal part of life. What we're talking about is real and relevant to what we're all going through. Number three, respect your leaders and your friends when they're talking. Number four, you're safe here. So if you're struggling about something that we're talking about today, talk with one of the leaders that you trust and they'll help you go through it. Number five, pay attention to the Holy Spirit. It might be trying, the Holy Spirit might be trying to convict you, prompt you, or comfort you. Listen to what the Spirit's trying to say. Lastly, before we get going, remember last week we talked about the Real Talk devotional. It's a 30-day devotional and we're going to do it together as a middle school body. Leaders and students, everyone combined. If you haven't signed up for it yet, don't worry. We're not mad at you. I'm not going to, you know, come at you or anything like that. I can't really because I'm outside and you're inside. But sign up. We'd love to do this together as a middle school body. Everyone together. Your leaders can help you register for this. And also, your parents got a link last week as we sent out a massive email. So help it. Go talk to your leaders, and they'll help you get set up for it. And lastly, if you have a question, we want to hear all your questions. So we're talking about some uncomfortable, real stuff. If you have a question, ask one of your leaders, and they'll help you guide you to the website, riverwood.cc slash the naked truth, and you can anonymously ask any question that you want about anything, you know, stuff like, is it okay to like the same person that my best friend likes? When can I start dating? Why is watching what you call dangerous actually dangerous for me, right? Anything you want to ask anonymously, go there and ask, and we will do our best to answer your questions for you. Okay, without further ado, here's Brittany with today's life lesson. So last week, we started talking about God as the most incredible author that there ever was. And he wants to be a part of writing every story of our lives. Our stories of adventure, purpose, family, and friends, and also our romance stories. God was the first ever author of romance, and we know that he cares about this area of our lives and wants to be a part of writing our stories. Whether they started or feel really far in the distance, God is wanting to prepare us for whatever is to come. So let's get into another story in the Bible. We enter into the scene and it's almost like it's this reality show where there's all these contestants and these contestants are there to become the next king of Israel. And there's this guy named Samuel and Samuel's job is to go into this party and choose who the next king is gonna be and who God tells Samuel the next king is gonna be. So there's this other man named Jesse and Jesse has his seven sons there and his sons are all wanting to become the next king. And they have this idea in their head of what a king looks like from the image of the current king, King Saul. And it says in 1 Samuel 9 that King Saul is tall and he's handsome. He's one of the most handsome men in all of Israel. And they think, you know what? I think I compare a little bit. Like, I don't look that bad. And so they think that they also can become king because they look the part. And so Samuel, he goes into this party and he's ready to find the next king of Israel. And he goes to the first person. And this is what we read in 1 Samuel 16. Samuel saw Eliab, that was the first son of Jesse, and thought, surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at things people look at. People look at outward appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. So they ended up bringing in David, the youngest of Jesse's sons, and he's a scrawny shepherd boy, and he wasn't even invited to the party. He wasn't invited to be a contestant to become king because he didn't look the part. But what he did have, and what God was actually looking for, was a man with a great heart and great character. I don't need to convince you guys that we tend to do the same as Samuel and judge people by their outward appearances. Our culture has these social cues that aren't really talked about, but everyone seems to know. Like, if you're dressed well, you are probably cool and popular. If your social media looks perfect, then you probably don't have anything bad happen to you. If you don't care about what you wear, or working out, or putting makeup on, then you probably aren't worth my time. 
And we know this so well that we judge people's physical appearances according to these cultural trends and norms. But we also use our physical appearances according to our cultural trends and norms to get people to look at us a certain way. Sometimes we might be more like David in the story where we feel like no one notices us and wish that people would see our hearts rather than just our outward appearances. But sometimes we're more like the other brothers getting ourselves all ready to be noticed, hoping that someone will take a look at us and know that we're king or queen material. But first, let's remember the story from last week with Adam and Eve in the garden. And remember how they were naked and they didn't feel any shame? I have no idea what they actually looked like back then or what standard of beauty was, but they didn't care. I don't think that it was necessarily that they were the Ken and Barbie type, looking flawless and the epitome of what we would say is beautiful. I think their hearts were so close to God that he directed their emotions to be completely confident in their bodies. They did not see their bodies as a way to attract people or get attention. They did not wonder if their arms were strong enough, their legs long enough, or their hair shiny enough. Their heart was so focused on God that they were not consumed with the way that they looked. It was only when they stopped focusing on God that they looked at their bodies and felt shame and they covered themselves. But back in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve, they felt no shame of their bodies, that is how God created it to be. The same God who created the mountains and the sunsets in this creation story, the oceans and the waterfall, the great natural wonders of the world also created your body. The master artist, most creative being that could possibly exist, created your body and it is the greatest work of art he has ever made. Your body is a work of art, it is a masterpiece and it deserves to be treated that way. Romans 12, a book in the New Testament, it talks about how we are to treat our bodies. It says, so here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. This verse is saying, one, our bodies and what we do with our bodies are meant to serve God. And two, we can't give into what the world says about our bodies, but need to fix our focus back on God, like Adam and Eve had originally done. Now, I wanna be clear that caring about your physical appearance is not a bad thing. I got up this morning, I showered, I put makeup on, I styled my hair, and I chose an outfit that I liked. That is not in itself a bad thing. The danger is when we become fixated on the wrong thing. It says don't become so adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without thinking. Another way to say this is don't conform to the patterns of this world. And the patterns of this world, if we were to order the values, goes first your body, and second, your heart or your character and how you act. But just because your body is the outer part of you does not make it the most important part. You are not just your body. You are your soul, which is sort of another way of saying heart, which means that you have a personality, you have emotions, you have thoughts and opinions, and we need to put these in the right order. Take this phone for example. Right now, all you can see is the outside of the phone. You can see the casing, the screen, you can see the camera and the microphone and the charging input. And so you could say that what you see is what you get and there's nothing else to it. But that would be wrong. If we were to open up the phone, we'd find so much more. We'd find the battery, the engine that causes the vibrations, the SIM card, the logic board, the cabling, everything that allows this phone to work, gather information, put that information to memory, and communicate with other phones is on the inside. And the part of the phone that has the greatest value, the part that you are paying for, is the part that is inside the casing. The casing is made to look nice and, and it looks great, but the inside stuff is what is valuable. Now imagine that our bodies are like this phone casing, the outer part of the phone. And like screens show you what is going on inside the phone, our bodies reflect what is inside of our hearts. When we get dressed, when we take selfies, when we post pictures or want people to notice us or wish that we could be invisible, when we look in the mirror and love what we see or hate what we see, that is reflecting what is going on in the heart. And so sometimes we have to challenge the heart and ask, why am I doing this? 
why am I putting on this piece of clothing or taking these supplements or working out so much or not eating or posting these pictures or sending these pictures or hiding entirely? Am I putting my heart first or my body first? Am I caring what the world thinks and following the patterns of the world or keeping my focus on what God who created me thinks that I'm his masterpiece? Because your body is a masterpiece and it deserves to be treated that way. But the other part of this is that other people's bodies are also masterpieces and they also deserve to be treated that way. Just as we need to have the right order of heart over body when we think and look at ourselves, we must have the same order when we think and look at other people. 1 Corinthians 13 gives us a picture of what it means to love other people and I love this. It says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, trusts, hopes, and perseveres. We are to be kind to other people's bodies, not envy them and not boast about our own. We do not dishonor others' bodies and put them down or flaunt our own bodies hoping to get something out of it. We do not conform to the lies that the world tells us about what our bodies are to look like, but speak truth over people as masterpieces of God. We can't just put value on the outside of people like our phones. The real value comes from the inside, but often we treat people like all we care about is the casing. So we must remember that each person, each person in the room with you right now, each person in your household, each person on your sports team or in your class, the people you see on Instagram, each celebrity on TV, or person that you encounter in the streets, they are all masterpieces of God, which means that we don't get to comment on them to make ourselves feel better or look at them and put ourselves down. We don't get to use them as a form of self-gratification or pleasure or choose them for our group because we like the way that they look. Each body is created by God and is a masterpiece and only the casing for much more valuable stuff inside. In the story of David, we don't know what his brothers ended up doing with their lives, but we know that David at that party, he was anointed as king because he had a heart that was focused on God and not his body. But he was anointed when he was a young boy. And it's interesting because it actually took 20 years before he became the next king of Israel. And you may feel like all of this stuff, it doesn't matter right now, but it does. How you view your body, how you view other people's bodies, and how you treat them is the screen reflecting what is going on in your heart. And now is a great time to focus on God so that in a year from now, five years, 10 years, 20 years from now, you are ready for everything that God is calling you to do. Now we want you to have the chance to talk and ask questions about your bodies in your life group and continue the conversation there. So you can go off and join your life group for more discussion.